Welcome to our video presentation, Upgrading to VMware vSphere 6.7. Today, I'm going to introduce myself and tell you just a little bit about VM sources. Then, we're going to look at where to get vSphere 6.7, including the vCenter server appliance and the correct VMware ESXi ISO image. After that, we're going to upgrade our vCenter to 6.7 and perform an orchestrated upgrade of each ESXi host using Update Manager. My name is John Borhag, and I'm the Lead Solutions Architect at VMSource's Virtualization. I've been actively consulting with VMware, Linux, networking, and cloud computing for more than 10 years. My job takes me all over the world, working with clients of all sizes, from three host VMware vSphere clusters to million square foot data centers. Please take the time to visit our website, vmsources.com, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on LinkedIn, or like us on Facebook. VM Sources is a premier provider of disaster recovery as a service, VMware consulting, and real world VMware training. There's no job too big or too small for VM Sources. My colleagues and I have already seen and overcome most of the challenges you face every day, so call us first or when other providers are falling short. 866 644 7764. Let's take a look at the correct source for the ISO images that we're going to use to perform the upgrade to VMware vSphere 6.7. We'll start by going to VMware.com, clicking Downloads, and then vSphere, where the latest version is always selected by default. Now we'll scroll down to our edition of VMware vSphere and we're going to select VMware vCenter Server and go to Downloads. The VMware vCenter Server appliance is always downloaded directly from VMware. When it comes to ESXi, it's a little bit more complicated. We'll go back to vSphere. We'll select our addition once again. However, many administrators have made the mistake of installing the ESXi ISO directly from VMware. Most major server vendors provide a vendor customized ISO image that should be used whenever possible. You can find most of those customized ISO images here on VMware.com under the tab Custom ISO Images. Before we perform the upgrade to vSphere 6.7, I'd like to show you around our default reference architecture. We're going to log into the vSphere Appliance Management Interface, or VAMI, using the root user and password to our current vCSA. You can clearly see that we're running vCSA 6.0 and that the health is good. And now I'm going to go to the web client and I'm going to log in using our SSO Administrator account. We're going to browse to the Hosts and Clusters Inventory view. And at the cluster level, we can observe that DRS is fully automated. In order to successfully upgrade our vCSA, we're going to have to localize it to a single host. In order to do so, we are going to edit the settings for DRS, and we're going to place DRS into manual. Now we're going to select our vCSA virtual machine and determine that it is currently on host ESX102. To perform the upgrade, we're going to go ahead and mount the VCSA ISO and locate the Windows installer. Fortunately, the VCSA 6.7 installer doesn't use the client integration plugin, so many of the hassles associated with previous versions are not present during this process. We'll choose Upgrade and Next accepting the EULA or end user license agreement. Now we're going to specify the source VCSA by FQDN and choose connect to source. And we're going to supply the SSO administrator username and password, as well as the ESX host where the current VCSA is located, ESX102, and the root user and password for that host accepting the certificate. Now we're going to specify a deployment target, which could really be any ESX host, but in this case we're going to use the very same ESX host where the current 
VCSA is located. Again with the root user and again accepting the certificate. Now we need to specify an appliance name for the resulting VCSA since VCSA 6.7 is going to be deployed on VMware Photon Linux we're going to start out with PHO and then the VCSA name applying a root user password now we get to choose a deployment size in this case we're going to go with tiny however we can also choose storage size if you were using something like Zerto or Veeam with tremendous numbers of tasks and events you might want to choose large or extra large for your storage size we're going to go ahead and leave this at default now we're going to choose a data store with sufficient free space and we're going to enable thin disk mode I have found that thin disk mode is very effective for the VCSA to prevent it from allocating all of its disk space at once we will choose a network for our VCSA. The VCSA needs to be on the management network. In our case, that's VM network. We're going to apply a static IP address. However, this is a temporary IP address that the VCSA is going to use during the upgrade process. And we'll supply a prefix length and a gateway and a DNS server and we're going to go ahead and click finish stage one is going to deploy the VM and install a bunch of RPM packages and in about 10 to 15 minutes we'll pick the process back up with stage two stage one of the VCSA upgrade process has completed successfully if for some reason the process is interrupted you can resume by browsing to the VAMI interface at the temporary IP address you specified earlier in the installation process. We're going to go ahead and click continue and next. Pre-upgrade checks can take a few minutes so just be patient and the resulting pre-upgrade check result warns us to make sure the DRS is set to manual for the duration of the upgrade process. We're going to go ahead and select the data that we would like to upgrade, configuration, configuration and historical data, or configuration and historical data with events, tasks, and performance metrics. This last bit of data is known as seat on the appliance itself, statistics, events, and tasks. We're going to go ahead and choose the whole thing and select next. We're going to go ahead and unselect VMware's Customer Experience Improvement Program only because this is a demonstration and choose next we'll select the checkbox guaranteeing that we've backed up the source VCSA and choose finish and acknowledge the fact that our source vCenter is going to be shut down during much of the upgrade process and now we wait it's going to be 30 to 40 minutes before the process is complete and we are fully upgraded to VCSA 6.7 Stage 2 is now complete and has generated a couple of informationals along the way. These informationals are about auto deploy and TLS. We're going to go ahead and choose close and then close. And we're going to choose to start the new HTML5 client to VCSA 6.7. Please note that our previous URL has now been applied to the new VCSA 6.7 we're going to log in with our administrator password and here we see the new VCSA 6.7 HTML5 vSphere client remember we left our cluster in DRS manual in order to take full advantage of the vSphere update manager we would like to set that back to fully automated if we have that feature available to us we're going to go ahead and select our DRS automation we're going to choose edit we're going to set the automation level back to fully automated and we're going to select OK. Once we've confirmed the functionality of our VCSA 6.7 deployment, we're going to want to go back and delete our old 6.0 VCSA. In the event that the upgrade had been unsuccessful, we could simply power on the old 6.0 installation 
and continue working with that. Since we're successfully using our 6.7 installation, we're going to go ahead and right click on this old SUSE Linux VCSA 6.0 installation and delete it from disk. Unfortunately, not every feature of vSphere 6.7 is available using the HTML5 web client. You can tell that you're using the HTML5 client because after the FQDN of your vCenter server, it's forward slash UI. In order to access features like the vSphere Update Manager, we're going to need to log in to the old-fashioned Flash-based web client. You will find the Flash-based web client at the FQDN of your vCenter server forward slash vSphere hyphen client in lower case. You're going to be auto-logged in to the Flash-based client using cached credentials. And once the page fully loads, let's click on the Home icon and browse to Update Manager. Here we'll connect to VCSA 101. We'll choose the Manage tab and we'll click on the tab for ESXi images. The first step in performing an orchestrated upgrade of our ESXi hosts is going to be importing our ESXi image. In our case, it's the HP customized ISO image that we downloaded earlier from VMware. I'm going to find that on my desktop, and I'm going to choose Open. The ISO upload to Update Manager takes just a few moments. And once the ISO is successfully imported, we'll go ahead and click Close. We now need to configure a host baseline. We're going to choose New Baseline. We're going to name this Upgrade to HPE ESXi 6.7, and this is going to be a Host Upgrade Baseline. We're going to choose the ISO that we just imported, and we're going to click Finish. Now we're going to click on Home, go to our Hosts and Clusters view, We'll select our cluster and go to Update Manager. And we're going to attach the baseline that we just created. Got to make our window just a little bit bigger so we can see the entire Update Manager dialog and choose OK. Now that we've attached our baseline, we're going to go ahead and choose Scan for Updates. We don't need to scan for patches and extensions. We're not doing that step yet. We're going to scan for upgrades. After a few minutes, I can see that we are non-compliant with the baseline that we just created. If I select the baseline and then click on the tab that says non-compliant, it shows me that all three hosts are not compliant with that baseline. In order to upgrade my hosts, all I need to do is click on Remediate. I'll go ahead and leave the default selections in place. I'm going to select all three of my hosts. I will accept the terms of the EULA. I'm going to go ahead and do this remediation right now as opposed to scheduling it later. I'm going to select my host remediation options. First of all, I'm going to select to disable any removable media devices connected to the virtual machines. This will often interrupt updating or upgrading ESXi hosts by preventing vMotion. I'm also going to set my retry delay following default values, 5 minutes and number of retries 3 times. I don't have DPM enabled, but I'll go ahead and select to disable it just in case. I'm going to select to disable fault tolerance if it's enabled. I'm going to select to disable admission control if it's enabled, but I'm not going to select enable parallel remediation for the hosts in this cluster because this cluster only has three hosts. If I was using Veeam, for example, I would want to make sure that powered off and suspended virtual machines were migrated to other hosts in the cluster during remediation so my replication process didn't fail. Now I'm going to go ahead and click Finish, and at this juncture, it might be nice to see the Tasks and Events window so I can track the progress of my remediation. To bring the Tasks and Events window 
back to the surface, I'm going to go ahead and click the down arrow by my current username, and I'm going to choose Layout Settings. And I'm going to choose Recent Tasks, and I'm going to say OK. And now we can see what's going on in the background. Right now, vMotion is taking place to place our first host into maintenance mode. After our first host goes into maintenance mode, it is going to be upgraded. It will be taken out of maintenance mode, and then the process will repeat on the other hosts. Let's watch just until the first host goes into maintenance mode, and then we'll check back in when the upgrade process has completed successfully. Okay, ESX 101 has been placed into maintenance mode, and the upgrade is going to be performed by Update Manager. The orchestrated automatic upgrade to ESXi 6.7 using vSphere Update Manager has completed successfully. You can see that all three hosts are compliant with the baseline that we created earlier. However, there is a yellow triangle which is present on each of our upgraded ESX hosts. You see they're reporting a problem, esx.problem.hyperthreading.unmitigated. This refers to a security vulnerability known as L1 terminal fault and may be mitigated by adjusting the advanced settings for your ESX server as is described in VMware KB 57374. Otherwise, we can consider the upgrade process to be an unquestioned success. I'm John Borhek. Thanks for watching today. Please join us for our next video, Adding Active Directory to vSphere SSO as an Identity Source. And don't forget, if you have VMware or disaster recovery needs, call us, 866-644-7764. Eight six 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 four four seven seven six four.